Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here in the winter 2023 soiree presented by the SIGGRAPH Education Committee. And in this session five, this is our grand finale session, final session for this uh, soiree. And we're kicking it off with Bonnie Mitchell, who is working on an archiving project, which is, it's fantastic to, to have you here for this. Uh, this year's SIGGRAPH uh, 2023 is the 50th SIGGRAPH uh, in history. And so Bonnie, why don't you uh, tell us about the archiving project and how folks can get involved as we come up to uh, the, the next conference. Um, so first of all, I wanna say that SIGGRAPH 2023, as Nick said, is gonna be a very exciting SIGGRAPH because it is our 50th conference. It's not our anniversary, it's not our birthday, it's our 50th conference. And I am the chair of all the events, and there's going to be talks, retrospective talks, a SIGGRAPH bowl. For those of you guys who've been around for a while, we've had a few in the past. They're lots of fun. They're entertaining. We're also going to have a fast backwards set of talks. So a lot of exciting things happening with talks. But to me, even more exciting than sitting in a chair listening to awesome content is getting up and walking through and experiencing 50 years of computing and computer graphics and interactive techniques. So we are designing a time tunnel. And that time tunnel, going a little out of order, but that's okay. I want to bring you through this. So the time tunnel is going to be in the concourse foyer, and you're gonna walk through this little time tunnel. I should zoom in a little bit. Okay, sorry, it's in Photoshop. I change it daily, it seems. Um, so you're gonna walk through this and you're going to experience 50 years of computing in a very experiential way. I, I came into the last session, you're talking about AI. There's going to be some AI. We've got a robot at the entrance that's going to be taking pictures of people and comparing them to uh, SIGGRAPH volunteers and Academy Award, uh, Academy, SIGGRAPH Academy, not Academy Award, but SIGGRAPH Academy people and uh, other award winners throughout the years. It's, it's a fun little robot thing that's going to be right there. But this area in through here will be designed by an international group of um, immersive space designers. Okay, we meet every Saturday and it's so exciting. It's blowing my mind. Um, but let's get back on how you can get involved. First of all, we have a call for participation and you go over, I put the link in the chat and so you can go over to this submission page and there's a number of different ways that you can get involved. And one of which is maybe you've got a hoard of old SIGGRAPH artifacts. I'll show you the archive in a minute. So don't send me stuff that I've already got a million of. <laughs> and most of it's in the archive, not all of it. So you can contact me first and say, I got a bunch of stuff. I want to get it out of my basement, right? And send it to you. Um, we actually have a physical archive room, okay? And it is full and very well organized. We have a team of students working on this and international. Um, oh, I've got a programmer in Mexico. We've got pioneers. It's, it's a large group, large group. Another way you can get involved. Okay, let me clarify that. So you could send us stuff that you want displayed at the conference. You may send us pictures. Maybe you don't want to part with that stuff. If we need a photograph of it, it may show up in the time tunnel. So that's good too. And maybe you have a collection of old graphic, I don't know, game controllers or something. Contact me, submit a proposal. We've got this. You know, that sort of idea. Another thing that you could do, and I'm going to jump right over to this, and that is that I, I think this is a great opportunity for students, especially students in, in, that have some artistic talent, is that um, Juan de Hoya, 
suggested this project to use as an inspiration. And this is this is a project that was done around mm, 1899, 1900, 1908, you know, a, or 1901, 1910. So it it evolved, but it's a set of postcards that depict what the future might look like in a hundred years. We're doing the same thing, except for in 50 years. We've come a long way in 50 years. Where will we be in 50 years? And get as crazy as you want, but design a four by six postcard, submit it to SIGGRAPH. We're going to have a whole giant wall filled with these postcards. Another thing that you could do is you could design an information visualization poster. And so the, this is an example, of, excuse me, I'll go over to this one. This is an example of one that John Petty did a number of years ago on the history of 3D and computing. This is set up more like a timeline. You could take any aspect of computer graphics or interactive techniques and contact us because we have this archive and we're just in the process of writing the code to export information. So you could use some of that information. It doesn't have to be very literal. It could be bar charts and crazy um, ways of looking at things. So the design of the information visualization is up to you. It could be even crazy images, right? A point cloud or something of this sort. So you can do some very interesting artistic approaches, very strict informational approach to the project. OK, now the other thing is we are we have a number of teams working on this time tunnel. And if you are interested in designing immersive spaces, send me an email before I leave. I'll pop my email in there. We have been meeting for a number of weeks, but we, we're not at the point where we're going to say nobody else. Right? Um, very impressive people on this team. So if you want to join that team, let me know. And the last thing I'll end with is SIGGRAPH has an archive and there is a physical archive and a digital archive. It is in progress. We are racing as fast as we can trying to get technical papers in there right now. We programmed this thing from scratch and there's lots of programming bugs we fix every week. Uh, we had like 65 things on her Trello list. We just went over it about a half hour ago. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's a lot happening here. And our goal is to add education and they would be under here in community. So we're really excited to do that and archive any of the materials that you want in this archive. The great thing about this archive is that it is interconnected. And so if I look at a person, I could view them by their type, or I could just look at all people. I can sort them by alphabetical, okay? It takes a while because there's we've got, I think, about 15,000 people in there so far. And each of these people have a profile page. And so when you click on their profile page, you get all of their submissions in any category. So it has this relationship and it builds this almost like this SIGGRAPH CV for you, you know, and there are people like, look up Jim Blinn if you want to see a big page. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff on that page. And then we've got the education forum. We're just about done with that one. So if you look in there and you say, oh, wait a minute, that's mine. And I've got an image for that. Send it to me because a lot of our education form entries um, might be missing an image, right? So we've got this yellow one right here. So these are the sessions that were presented in the past. You can sort it by year. And the last thing I'll end with is the physical co collection. So I had mentioned this earlier. This is actually not the room we're in, we moved to a larger room because we outgrew this room. Um, but we collect all this stuff and organize it and archive it. And at the end of this page, at the very bottom, 
you'll see these inventories. We're working on adding more. Okay, so you can look at the inventories and say, oh, wait, I've got some of those. I'd like to get rid of them. Who do I send them to? So I'd like to stop and just say any questions. So uh, definitely uh, share your email address. The, uh, you know, I am, are you the, the, that would that be the best way to be able to contribute anything or inquire about contributing or becoming involved? If it's an information visualization poster, go through the SIGGRAPH submission system. Unless you want data to do that visualization, then, you know, the sad thing is that we haven't got all the data entered, you know, but at least you could work, you know, get everything kind of working like you want, and then we can send you updated data. Okay, so that's, that's good. Um, if you want to do a poster that depicts what the future might, I mean, excuse me, a postcard that depicts what the future might look like in 50 years, go through the submission system, get as you can submit as many as you want, okay? And we'll do the printing. So just submit it as a digital print. And we, we hope to fill the wall. It'll be fun. And so in collections, terms of- Oh, excuse me. Last thing, collections. If you have collections or artifacts, the best thing is to contact me directly. But if you go through the submission system, I'll also get that. And so how would someone- specifically, is there something that they should select to specifically target the archive? I mean, posters, there's a poster section, right? So is, no, it, no, just, no. is it under history or should they submit that, to history? That's, that's actually, that question clarifies a conversation I had earlier. They were like, there's something wrong with the posters thing. And I'm not associated with posters at all. I am strictly history. So you want to go to the how to submit and then click on history okay. and everything's in there. And, and as part of uh, my presentation in a little bit, I'll be showing how to navigate to that submission area, but I can share with folks now, since I happen to have it open, is that uh, this is the, the SIGGRAPH 2023 website. Of course, it's s2023.siggraph.org. And there is a uh, link here for uh, submitting to SIGGRAPH. And as we scroll down here uh, in the experiences category, uh, Bonnie, is this the correct spot right here? History, that, whoops, right there. That is, yes. There we go. So this is where you would submit content for that. So wonderful. Uh, Thank you so much, Bonnie. I know we're actually running a little over. I know you have something else to get to. Um, I'm giving the same but... presentation at the DAC. Oh, well, this presentation. Was a... and, and I actually, can I just take 30 seconds to do a shameless plug? Oh, absolutely. For the about. VR session that's happening in the SIGGRAPH Digital Arts community. And there is some amazing speakers talking about VR and spatiality. So please go over to this site, click on the, it's the, the second thing on the spindle, <laughs> or it's called Sparks. Okay, so I'll put this link. Now, we're, yeah. we're not seeing your screen right now. So if you nope, want to- it's coming right in the chat. Ah, there we go. Wonderful. So go over to the DAC site and Sparks, and it's all on VR tonight, and Victoria Sabo is the moderator. So I know you've had a day full of so much awesomeness that I don't know if you can put more in that brain, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm giving a talk there um, starting at four. <laughs> so I'll three, see you guys three minutes ago. Okay. Thanks so much, Bonnie. Take care. Bye-bye. So I, we jumped into this session very quickly because of Bonnie's tight schedule. But our session here, number five, is focused on the SIGGRAPH 2023 conference coming up. Uh, it will be August 6th through 10th, and we're in Los Angeles. And so we're, we're 
looking at different ways in this education space to get involved in that conference. And so to continue on that theme, we have Natasha Washarsky, and she is here to share about how our students can get involved. Is that right, Natasha? That is correct. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Um, so let me introduce myself. I am here representing the chapters committee. Um, here are some images of the people on our committee, and I'm actually substituting for Kevin McNoldy, who is our liaison to student chapters, if you can see my cursor there. So if you're interested in starting a student chapter, or if you um, already have a student chapter, perhaps there's some faculty advisors in the space. I think, Nick, you are for Drexel. Um, I am for PCAD, Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Um, he is probably the person that you'll be um, coordinating with. So I wanted to put a little star on his face for that. Um, so there's a couple uh, pointers if you're interested in starting a student chapter and there is a longer version of the slide presentation. Um, Nick, I don't know if I can pass that along to be published or if people are interested, there is an email at the end of the slides. Um, so these are kind of like the, the short list of everything needed. Um, but first of all, you might be asking yourself, why start a chapter? Um, so there's kind of a, a distinction here we want to make. You could, of course, start a computer graphics club at any school um, and have that going and celebrating computer graphics. But there's a couple of benefits that come from uh, chartering as an official ACM SIGGRAPH chapter. Um, so first of all, you get plugged into our network. There's over 100 different professional and student chapters. Um, that exist at this time and it is international so it's all around the world um, that's kind of nice I like to tell my students um, and prospective students too you know if if you're already plugged in at a chapter at your school and you decide to relocate after you graduate um, you can check a list of all the major cities and see if there's a chapter in your area so you kind of get plugged in that way um, which is nice um, uh, filling curriculum gaps, that's a big one that I've noticed uh, with our students is they love to give tutorials and demo sessions. And um, as we all know, as educators, there's a little bit of time that takes uh, in editing curriculum or incorporating new tools and new skills. But if students can kind of beat us to it and then start to share the knowledge around, that is a really excellent um, way to kind of supplement that through something like SIGGRAPH. Um, it's leadership and entrepreneurial experience. Um, a big one is our distinguished speaker program that's actually put on through ACM, I believe. So you get access to a little bit of money and um, popular speakers who are interested in visiting chapters and giving talks. Um, there is a little bit of grant funding available through the PSSE uh, specifically. Um, so you can apply for that if you have bigger ideas in mind. Um, and in general, it's good for strengthening your community with your students. I know, uh, when I was a student, we were all big nerds, and sometimes it's hard to get out and meet people, and um, sometimes it's hard to kind of cross-pollinate between different grade levels, so getting freshmen to kind of interact with seniors is always a challenge, um, so it's nice for that, too. It's not always business. Sometimes it's game nights, and sometimes it's just hanging out, or sometimes it's helping people when Maya eats their homework. Um, so a couple uh, common event types are listed here. So you can have demos, lectures, screenings, um, you can have competitions. Uh, my students put on modeling, speed modeling nights sometimes. So there's like a prompt and then they have an hour to model it out. Um, bring your own animation. That's kind of a popular one in both the student and professional um, chapters that we've seen. Um, portfolio reviews is fun. If you have a small pizza budget, people go crazy for pizza. Um, in the college, well, college and professional. Um, so if any of those things sound interesting to you and you like the idea of plugging into the SIGGRAPH network, um, there's a couple things. So you do wanna meet informally with people who are interested. Um, this is a big one, find out your university or school's requirements. So um, something kind of unique about SIGGRAPH student chapters is we're like three institutions in a trench coat. So you have to follow the rules of your university. You have to follow the rules of SIGGRAPH and you have to follow the rules of ACM. And usually they all work together just fine, but it is like you have to pay attention to all three. Um, and then start planning events. So uh, you can start 
advertising um, without our name first so that you don't violate our brand guidelines, but just getting people together first and making sure it's something that everyone's interested in is important. Um, you're also going to want to identify leaders. So these are people um, that are reliable and can organize things. Um, for students, you also wanna identify a faculty advisor or for faculty members in the space, perhaps you are the one initiating and you wanna identify um, those sort of standout students that you think would carry the group well. Um, let me skip ahead to requirements, here we go. So these are kind of the grocery list um, items, uh, the nitty gritty of what we actually need. So you need 10 members, that's the magic number, 10 members and four of those members need to be officers. So the official titles are chair, vice chair, secretary and treasurer. Um, this is new and I have to give kudos to Kevin McNulty for this initiative, but we now provide free memberships for all of the officers on student chapters. So that they no longer have to pay the $50 a year to become a member, that is all taken care of during signup. So you get a membership number, you get access to the digital library and all the benefits of membership, you get discounted conference passes, that's a big thing. Um, also applies to faculty sponsors, we like that as well. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so a big thing that I kind of want to stress here is uh, the pain point for student chapters is the frequent officer turnover. So students are not students forever. They graduate, they move on, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, well, fortunately, it's a good thing when they move on. But that's the, um, the most likely time for a student club to kind of fall off or perish is when the officers graduate. So um, my tips for that are, first of all, to pick students that you know are interested and pick uh, freshman and sophomore students that you can hang on to for a little bit longer and encourage them, encourage the upperclassmen to kind of mentor them and take them under your wing. Um, at the same time, faculty sponsors are often the points of contact between the chapters committee um, and your chapter. And um, the idea is not to put more work on your plate, but just to make sure that there's a more permanent person there in charge. Um, so for, speaking from my experience, you know, I'm not involved in the weekly activities of my students chapter, but I'm the person that kind of nudges them to make sure that the end of year report gets turned in, um, to make sure that their numbers are all updated on the ACM database, things like that. So once you have 10 members and four of them want to be officers and one of them is a faculty sponsor, um, then you sign a petition. You collect your info. Um, you probably want to establish your meeting times at this point if you haven't already. Um, I find with students weekly is a good, like that's frequent enough that they won't forget about it. <laughs> and um, weeklies doesn't have to be like a full lecture every week or full tutorial or activity or contest every week. Sometimes, again, it's just hanging out. Um, and then at this point, you will want to contact the PSCC to finalize your charter. So the charter application is, again, filling in all this information, getting your um, ACM SIGGRAPH account started, and we can walk you through all of that. So the application process, there's a link here that I'm going to leave up on the screen, and um, we will reach back out and um, start that with you. And it looks like this. Um, if I'm able to share the full slide deck, uh, there is more information to give you a better picture of what this looks like, but that's our first step. Um, or again, if you want to contact us, we can send you the rest of that information as well. Natasha, I was gonna suggest that you could uh, share, if you want to, after the presentation, copy paste of those links into the chat and then folks will have that directly in the yes, chat. Yes, that'd be great, that'd be great. Um, our email is also at the end, and I want to say it's chapters at sigraph.org, um, but let me get to the end of the slide. <laughs> That's actually our, our email that goes out to all of us, too. I will definitely post that. Um, so a couple of rules in, in uh, housekeeping is there's bylaws that we have to follow. Um, the magic number for meetings is four per year. You do write those up in a report and submit them. And a big thing, and I'm glad we put it here, too, is don't overcommit. 
it's very easy to get excited and plan a meeting every month or, you know, I mentioned those weekly meetings. Um, the minimum is four. So if you only want to do one big event and then three little kind of hangout events, that's totally fine. That is all you need to remain in good standing as a charter chapter. And then lastly, we are required to have a website. So there we go. Um, you can get a free one from us, or if your university provides one, uh, you can do that as well. Um, if you want to link them up together, you can have your like .sigraph.org website set up and then redirected to your university website. We can help you out with all of that, however you want to do it. Um, but just know that uh, is a requirement and you get a free little thing there. Um, I know a lot of students, you know, five or 10 years ago, it's Facebook events. Now it's discords. So at a minimum, if you would like to have your um, kind of landing page and then have that direct out to the thing that you use to promote events, that's totally acceptable, just as long as there's something public facing. Um, regular contact with the chapters committee, that's us. And then the annual report, I've mentioned that a couple of times, that is part of ACM's requirements and that is um, a record to make sure that you're actually active and meeting together and there are people. And again, that grocery list of items is 10 interested members, four of them are officers, one of them is a faculty advisor, and four events a year. That's all you need. It's not that hard. Anyone can do it. And, oops, move too fast. Um, this is taken care of when you get chartered and then through your end of year report. Again, making sure that you're active and people are participating. Um, there is a mailing list and Slack channel for chapter leaders. We do a couple events every year. So there's one big chapter leaders workshop um, where either remotely or at the conference, we get together and we kind of share best practices, check in with everyone. Um, and I have to say from personal experience, it's kind of cool to walk into a room and meet all the chairs of the different chapters from around the world. And we all have like the same things we complain about and the same things that we get excited about. Um, so it's kind of a fun event in my opinion. Um, then publicizing SIGGRAPH and ACM events, we do have a shared calendar. Um, there's been a couple uh, chapters these past couple years that I do wanna shout out. So DC, LA, Silicon Valley, New York, um, Vancouver have been very active in making their events available to everyone. So again, that idea that you're plugging into a larger network, um, your students can attend all of those events if they become a charter chapter, um, which is really neat. And um, going to the same like Zooms and starting to recognize the same people is kind of a uh, fun, easy, accessible way to get involved with the SIGGRAPH organization. So again, here's lots of links. I can post them afterwards. I can share the slides if possible, or you can reach out to us. There it is. I knew I got it wrong. PSCC at acmsigraph.org is our email. Please use that. Not what I said before. <laughs> I will post it in the chat. Um, that is your way to contact us if you're interested. Um, if you uh, have people together, or if you just have some questions about being chartered, or if you were previously chartered and it's fallen off and you're interested in rechartering again, that is something we can help you with as well. Um, all of those are great reasons to get involved and contact us. Um, let me see here. Can I leave this up and then go back to the Zoom? I think I have to stop my share. There we go. Okay. Any questions? You can certainly uh, still copy paste those links while you don't have your screen shared. We'll still be able to see those in the uh, webinar chat. Just make sure when you do that, that you're posting those to everyone's attention so that uh, everyone can see those. Uh, I think, you know, I'll note that um, this, of course, is going to be posted uh, to uh, be available after this live event. Uh, there's a certain degree of the, the live attendees being a little bit of us preaching to the choir. Uh, but if there's anyone here right now uh, that maybe doesn't know if their organization has a student chapter, 
that right there is your cue to find out if it does. And if it doesn't, to start putting one together. I, I you know, the, the, Natasha's presentation actually may have been one of the longest of the entire soiree here. But mm -hmm. part of that is that, um, that personally, I'm really passionate about the student chapters. I, I think that uh, from a perspective of someone who is uh, very involved in SIGGRAPH and, and, and could arguably be a SIGGRAPH in general, entire organization and conference uh, evangelist. Uh, I really believe that the SIGGRAPH student chapters are the future of SIGGRAPH. Um, I, I came to SIGGRAPH not as a student. I was late in life transitioning to the, the computer graphics industry in general, and, and SIGGRAPH was pivotal to that entry into computer graphics uh, but one of the things that 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 i miss is that i uh, you know i I often see people that I, that I have known for decades that are uh, computer graphics uh, gurus that that love running into their their fellow student uh, chapter or their student volunteer cohorts uh, that like oh I remember back in the 1990s that you know we were student volunteers together I didn't get to participate so there's a little bit of a I, I I envy everyone that has the opportunity to be involved in a student chapter and and be uh, part of the student volunteering process so um, I don't think I can stress enough to other faculty how great it is to have this chapter uh, organization uh, in your uh, in your cohorts and your with your students and and so so I'll just pitch that, and if that wasn't enough, I think there's one little perk of the student chapter thing that might not have I, I didn't notice it in your presentation, Natasha. Um, so you might want to think of uh, telling Kevin to maybe add that to the, the slide deck. Is my understanding is that student chapters have the opportunity to. to screen the SIGGRAPH conference electronic theater in their own facilities. I, I think there's like there's some tiny stipend fee that, you know, it, you know, a few tens of dollars or something like that. Um, but, you know, the, the electronic theater screening at the SIGGRAPH conference is one of the exclusive, it costs extra to go. And sometimes ticket, it, it's not unusual for tickets to sell out before people have all gotten what it, in there. Um, and so student chapter is a conduit, a path to being able to screen the electronic theater. That is true. So to expand on that a little bit, it's not just student chapters. It is professional as well. It is any chapter. Um, it is a slightly different reel than the electronic theater at the conference. From what I understand, there are some things that get removed before it goes out um, on its circuit to the chapters. But that being said, there's still like 80% of it is still in it. Um, and it's totally free. So there is like a little processing fee that can be reimbursed. Um, that's how we've been doing it since the, the past couple of years. Um, but it, it's essentially completely, totally free. Um, you can uh, screen it for however many people you would like. Um, it is kind of a, again, the way we've been doing it the past couple of years, it's like a, a digital rental. So you kind of check it out for a day and then you can screen it. Um, so that is a really good perk. Thank you for uh, reminding us about that. So, and and we have uh, live participant William Joel is. Uh, how can we get that organization out to everybody? How how can we get this information out to everybody? Uh, I thought I saw that go by, but um, we'll, we'll definitely yeah. Chapters um, information. I think the best way perhaps is our chapters.sigraph.org website, um, putting that out there. There is a kind of an interesting, um, there's people who learn about the conference through being a chapter member. And sometimes there's a little delay in like, you know, I understand this is a student club or a professional um, network, and it takes them a little while to understand there's actually this huge conference that goes along with it. On the flip side, there's a lot of conference attendees that may not know that there's a chapter in their area. And so there is an interactive map on our chapters.sigraph.org website if you would like to see who all is listed and chartered. Um, there is a little booth. You can come say hi to us at the conference if you see us around and if you're interested. Um, I can also say it's been a, a kind of back burner dream of mine to start a professional chapter in Philadelphia. So if people are interested in that, please get in contact with me. Um, and if you don't have one in your city, the process of chartering a professional 
chapter is very similar to a student chapter. So again, it's a minimum of 10 members, four events a year, four officers. Uh, professional chapters do not need a faculty sponsor. That's kind of nice. Um, and it's a little easier to, again, the officer turnover doesn't have to be as quick as students are. So the idea is when you um, put it together, you're kind of like planning it out for the long run. Um, we do have uh, how to start a chapter presented at every conference. Um, and I think they just did one for SIGGRAPH Asia that might be live somewhere. But again, a lot of the steps are the same. So if you don't have one in your city, you could start that um, and get all the cool perks that um, we mentioned before. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, uh, William Joel notes that, uh, you know, uh, students that are in chapters are, are certainly encouraged to uh, talk about chapters to others. I, I think that uh, it's fair to say, you know, the first rule of student chapters is to tell everyone about student <laughs> chapters. So yeah, they are, thank, they thank are um, participating as a student volunteer. Something we do every year at the North America Conference is a SV luncheon. So they get a free uh, lunch with us and then the chapter leaders go around and kind of ask if they're participating, if they're interested in participating. Do they know about the chapter's network? Do, you, do they know what it means to run a chapter? Um, so I've done that for the past couple of years and sometimes we get people that's like, we do have a computer graphics club and why would we want to be chartered? And then we get to have that conversation. So um, yes, please tell everyone. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Natasha. Um, I'll, you can stay on board or would you like me to set you as attendee or, or do you want to stay on the panel with me for a while? Is there a, what's the schedule? I, I... This is, we are the finality. I have a couple items to share about the education program at uh, coming up at the conference and, and, and how to submit. Um, and then, and well, and then we'll, we'll likely transition to the after party. But uh, so if, uh, would, would you like to stay on panel with me right now? Or do you, would you like to be attendee while we're wrapping things up here? So it's um... up to you. I, I would love to stay on. I'm All right, great to have, great to have you. Um, so uh, uh, before I start up again, the, uh, William Joel does ask one last question on the student chapters, and that is, is it possible to, or do student chapters uh, collaborate and work together uh, mm -hmm. between schools? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the capacity is certainly there. Um, the events have happened um, there was what, so when I was an undergrad, we did like a collaborative, um, animation jam. Um, and that was kind of fun, although very stressful. <laughs> um, I know, uh, the, our, our students, Nick Drexel and PCAT have gotten together a couple of times. They would do virtual events together. And again, because of the pandemic, um, we were able to kind of like connect those online communities, um, in ways that we couldn't before. Um, here in the, we're, you know, kind of in an interesting little uh, uh, bubble on the East Coast, there's a bunch of schools around us. So I know in the Philadelphia area, there's Drexel, UPenn, uh, TCNJ, Midget, I think has a, a chapter, Rowan University had a chapter. Um, there's us, PCAD in Lancaster, PA. Um, so we're all together. Um, and I do make an effort if there's, um, again, that chapter leaders, uh, um, workshop when people get together, we try and pair them up. Um, the professional chapters have a, a rule about distance. Like there should not be, if there's two major cities, then like if they're too close together, they, then one takes over as a chapter. Um, but student chapters do not have that rule. So we're able to have like a bunch of schools together um, in the same area. So the short answer is yes. Uh, we would love yep. to see that um, encouraged more. Um, and with our, our modern teleworking tools it's a little bit easier now but um it, at the moment it is kind of on the students to you to kids and your video games being connected all the time <laughs> the, I, I i think that that's fair to say is it's yet another perk of the student chapters is that if there it, it is uh it is an active network that connects the uh student bodies of multiple institutions and and that can operate nationally internationally or regionally uh, I, I was you you beat me to it i was going to point out that in the example of the the you know southeastern pennsylvania uh region that, that there's a 
pretty good density of student chapters and uh, it's not at all unusual for them to have collaborative events uh, co-hosting things or even you know virtually connect uh, different events and so so that's really really cool so I'm going to go on and, and just talk about two more things uh, before we wrap up. I, I just saw Glenn, oh. Glenn Goldman uh, corrected me. It's N-G-I-T. I, I can't read. N-G-I-T. There we yes. go. N-G-I-T. Yep, absolutely. So, um, so with SIGGRAPH, there's a couple other things that we as educators can do, uh, you know, look forward to as well as uh, getting involved in, in the conference. And uh, you know, I'll be talking about, of course, we want to be able to do our submissions. But before we get to submitting our own content, I do want to highlight Educators Day coming up. And, there, and there's two things uh, related to that for us as educators. So I'll first talk about what Educators Day is. And that is that there is a specific day for the conference. Last year was the first time we had it. And we had Educators Day on the Monday of the conference week. And I'm currently expecting that we'll have a similar program uh, schedule this year, that it'll likely be the Monday. And it's a full day of programming where uh, generally companies uh, are presenting specifically to address educators. And so all, you know, your educator registration uh, provides access to attend this. And it's a great way for educators to get together where a lot of times some of us are presenting or we're involved in other aspects of the conference or running around hoping to see uh, content uh, that's you know maybe initially intended for folks in industry or looking at research. And this is kind of happening at a moment when there's not as much of that going on. And also the presenters are directly in, you know, attending to present to us as educators. And so the content is really feature rich for us. And um, I, last year being the first year of this uh, was, was really wonderful to see you know, it was in Vancouver, no one was really entirely sure how many folks would be coming to an in-person international conference when you know, we were all just recovering from the pandemic. Uh, and it was packed. Uh, we had a really great day. Uh, the day kicked off with uh, a, a coffee and, and standing around chatting. And uh, we had this room booked, not sure if it was going to be too big of a space. And it turned out to be not quite big enough. Uh, I, I took a lot of pictures and uh, basically it became literal standing room only. Uh, sometime after I took this particular picture, more people came and there were people sitting in the aisles and standing at the doorway. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna sit, I, I'm not allowed to show the pictures of anything after this because, well, you know, th th that might not have been the actual best situation for the fire marshal. So um, it was under, um, in summary, extremely successful in terms of how well it was attended and we're definitely doing it again. So uh, one note is for any educators that are planning to attend SIGGRAPH in Los Angeles this August is to keep that Educators Day in mind. And if in the past you may have chosen to arrive on Monday and, and catch the, the core of the presentations that, that tend to happen in the Tuesday through Thursday, you know, plan to come a little bit earlier. Registration, I think, is going to be open as early as Saturday evening. I think there's going to be SIGGRAPH programming on Sunday. Day again this year and um, you know plan to attend educators day it's really really good um, part of what makes it really really good is the organizations that are presenting and so last year we had uh, ILM presented at, and again they were directing what they were presenting to educators you know really addressing us as educators with information that we could take back to our students uh, there were another number of companies that presented including epic games uh, Leica presented. And um, 
so that's a kind of another way that we as educators could get involved. And that is to share with the vendors that we work with, you know, that we, we, we work with motion capture companies and software companies and you know, Autodesk had, had presented um, any of these organizations that we interface with the studios that, that hire our students may have an interest in presenting to other educators. And so feel free to, you know, again, like student chapters, first rule of Educators Day is to tell everyone about Educators Day. And so that includes to share with industry that there's this opportunity with this massive uh, international conference that draws quite a few educators from all over the world, that there's this Educator Day opportunity that they can get involved in. Uh, for the folks that are presenting, there is there is a charge to do that. So, um, you know, I think for us as educators, you know, the, the folks that are presenting have actually contributed to the SIGGRAPH conference for the privilege of presenting to, to us as educators. Uh, so that is something that to, to be aware of, but um, we, we really want to be able to promote this to organizations in industry um, as an opportunity. And uh, they can uh, find out about more, uh, you know, through the the Seagraph website itself. Uh, they can send an email or anyone can send an email to education-s2023 and, and that will reach me. And uh, I'm working with Monica who organized last year's Seagraph. Uh, we've managed to work out that uh, she can run She's organizing the Educators Day portion of the education program for this uh, 2023 uh, conference. So that was the first thing that I wanted to highlight for everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, William Joel is pointing out we we did have to uh, turn turn people away. It was packed, and uh, so uh, so we'll, we're looking forward to uh, being in a larger room this year, and and then packing that room as well, and, and making sure. Yes, we're all I was there. one of those people that got turned away. I think I made it. To oh no! And then it was like, um, yeah, no one could get in after that. So I had a little bit of FOMO. I hope there's conference organizers watching and and putting you guys in a larger room because it was. Um, oh yeah, big draw and and there was I was talking to people afterwards too about all the the ones we missed. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll be um, look. We are definitely going to be in a larger room and uh, and looking forward to being able to host more folks. And of course, if you're going to be coming for Educators Day anyway, uh, you know why not submit? And there's a lot of ways to get involved in in SIGGRAPH, the conference itself. And uh, I want to kind of demystify the, the submission process because a lot of times I, I talk to educators and, and um, I know that when I was putting together my first submissions, it, it was a little bit of a, wow, what am I doing here? And where do I have all the right things? Um, there are a few areas that as educators we can submit to and, and to Basically, the process is to go to the website, s2023.sigraph.org, and um, there is a link right here to submit to SIGGRAPH. So if you have an idea of something that would be interesting to include as part of the SIGGRAPH program, this is how you get it included, is to submit it. And there are quite a few different categories that are open right now that can be uh, submitted to. Uh, we had Bonnie on earlier, so history is one of those areas. Uh, one uh, other note to point out, and I'll, I'll credit William Joel for noting that uh, there's a category that's not open yet for submissions, but birds of a feather are sent essentially hey we're all interested in this thing together let's all let's get together and, and talk about this thing uh, and a lot of times we'll uh, pull together the birds of feather sessions that are education related and and uh, the education community uh, coordinates those so that there is this uh, birds of a feather uh, category to submit to and then we have Educators Forum, which is going to be focused, of course, on panels and talks uh, focused on educators and education. Uh, so you can click on those and, and there's information there. And uh, the, the main feature of uh, education submissions is the engaging education techniques and assignment. And for this, what we're really interested in is indiv individual educators or groups of educators submitting 
examples, essentially case studies of assignments that they've conducted in class that can be transferable, that can, would be of interest for other educators to see, to seed those ideas for, for new assignments that can be incorporated into other classes. So just wanted to point that out. And then there is how to submit. And uh, how to submit, uh, one thing that I would recommend is that you put together essentially an abstract of what you would be presenting. So the uh, EETA is essentially formatted as a 20 minute talk. Uh, I just noticed that uh, I think that my mouse is not being shared. So you don't get to see where my mouse is floating. So I'm just gonna try and activate that right now. There we are, mouse pointer there. Now you can see my mouse. So down here, length of EETA talk. So this you know, is a 20 minute talk and the submission will ask you for an abstract. And, and this can be a, a two-page Word document. And there is a, um, a submission. Here's, here it is. This is a link right here of a, an example of a well-formatted submission. And so it's a PDF that, that is an example submission that, that was used in the past. So if you're not sure, like, well, what do I need to do to format my, my submission? Uh, you can look at this as an example. I think particularly for EETA, one of the things that we really do want as part of how we archive these submissions, because the point of the EETA is to share this with other educators and have this be stored on our website uh, be part of the archive to uh, share with others. And we, we want we want some a little bit of essentially our metadata to be uh, uniform across all of these submissions. So be sure to take a look at this and make sure you include a table that has these uh, the summary, the learning outcomes, et cetera, everything in here, you would, would include that. But you can see that the abstract itself is very, very small. And uh, you know some representative imagery here. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about about the uh, exact details of you know what the the doi.org identification is going to be this will if you are accepted all of this will be coordinated with you uh, before you make a final submission that is ultimately going to be what goes into the archive uh, I think one other note is that there is also a um, a word doc template available that you can use in, in formatting that. And then uh, you'll, so you'll wanna prepare that, you'll wanna have some representative images. I, I think another thing that's really helpful in these submissions is to, to prepare a video and post that in some accessible way that you can include when you actually enter your submission into the uh, website that collects them. So, uh, you know, you could have, an, whether it's listed or unlisted, uh, you know, a private video on Vimeo or unlisted on YouTube, something like that, that uh, will help inform the review committee uh, a little bit more about what you're uh, sharing. And, and so, Ultimately, you'll be sharing and, and turning in all of this material in something called a submission portal. And so when you when you click on the, uh, the submission portal link, you'll get a login page and, and there's me and my, my email address is how I log in. And you can, of course, uh, create a account there for free and you'll end up with a submission form that looks like this on a web page. Clearly, this is a sample. The, uh, the folks that put this together for us want to make sure that everyone knows this is a sample, 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 sample. Uh, but you'll be entering it a title. Um, if you are specifically submitting for engaging education techniques and assignments, you would select that this is, that's what you are submitting. And you'll choose, when you choose that, some other aspects of the uh, submission form will uh, adjust to accommodate that particular submission format. Note that you might be submitting, you might want to be able to submit in terms of educator's form, you might want to submit an idea for a talk or a panel. So you can select those modalities as well so that um, you're not limited to a, you know, submitting an assignment per se. You can submit to a panel or a talk and the form will adjust accordingly. And you can note that, uh, you know, We've suggested reviewer types for your submission, and you could note, uh, you know, a university professor, and that'll kind of flag that 
okay, my submission, even though it's a panel or a talk, is is geared towards education educators, and uh, that way that we'll know to to evaluate it on that um, uh, in, in that way so uh that's that's it you'll you'll have your your website you can of course have multiple contributors for your submission uh share a small a 50 word synopsis as well as a text uh copy of of your abstract uh and these are all used by the review jury of course this will be ultimately reviewed by a jury and so you'll complete this form and ultimately uh, hit submit and uh, that will get reviewed in uh, the the SIGGRAPH uh, general submission jury and uh, then you'll be notified of uh, acceptance and from there you know we'll work with you in terms of if there's any questions about you know any kind of formatting or you know getting your uh, your releases and and your identification all for, uh, formalized for um, your your archiving documents and and then ultimately we'll be looking forward to seeing you at the conference to uh, present your works. So uh, that's it. I hope that that helps uh, anyone who has not submitted before. Um, and, and of course, you can uh, reach me at uh, again. I believe the uh, email address is. Let me just double check that it, it is uh, education. Okay, so it's education dash s twenty twenty three at sigraph org uh, is where you can reach me. Uh, I'm I'm chairing the education forum this year, and uh, so the, that email will reach me. And I'm um, happy to address any questions there uh, ahead of the submission deadline. And I guess the other thing to note is that uh, the Educators Forum due date is February 22nd. So there is just about a month here uh, ahead of us before uh, those submissions are due. So there's plenty of time to submit for SIGGRAPH 2023. And then we'll hope to see you in Los Angeles. All right. So I think this concludes our sessions. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and participating with uh, this uh, winter 2023 soiree. I, I Personally, I think this has been really successful and I expect that we'll, we might try and squeeze in one more soiree before the August conference. And um, I think we will end it there. Uh, unless uh, Natasha, you have anything else to add or? Or say, I think we'll One be able question to. Question about the the educators yeah. um, category: Is mm -hmm. that the same, or was it converted, or is it different from the Groovy Graphics Assignment category? Is that um, so? The the EETA, the you know engaging uh, teaching and assignment, um, is that the the Groovy right. Graphics Assignment. So this used to be called Groovy Graphics Assignment, and we initially had that adopted from there's another sig i think it might have been sig kai that mm -hmm. that had uh something along those lines I, I i i forget exactly what it was like jazzy something or <laughs> or other and um I, I think that that there was a concern about folks not, not entirely knowing what groovy graphics assignment was um, but so so the name did change and um, we did get a great set of submissions uh, with last year's conference and uh, and so I think that we're we're holding on to this this EETA uh, name for this uh, and in the hopes of of ensuring that folks understand that you know we're we're looking for innovation uh, things that are engaging and cross disciplinary uh, things that are it's really interesting that you're doing curricularly or as an assignment or as a project that you, that you had your students do with the idea of sharing that uh, internationally and, and and seeing those things grow as a resource for other think, educators. The, the change is good. And I, I think it's especially awesome that you guys are providing templates and um, that sort of support for educators. So that's cool. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that, that overarchingly, it is a great idea to submit. William Joel just put in the comments, like, if in doubt, submit. <laughs> um, I, I think that everyone should, you know, definitely set aside any fear of, sub of submitting. Uh, I think it, in general, it is far better to submit. And um, even if you're not sure, I mean, I, I'll I'll say that one of the things that that I was most impressed upon uh, when I when I was 
on my first ever uh, general submissions jury with SIGGRAPH was just how important it was to the folks on the jury to provide constructive, useful feedback. Um, that, that is really part of the mission of the SIGGRAPH conference is to be of value. And so the absolute worst case scenario for you, if, you know, if you were to submit and and that your submission is declined for this year's uh conference um, is that you will get constructive information, actionable uh, feedback in with your um, submission that that comes back to you. And, and a lot of times the feedback is we would love to, to include this in a future conference. And here are some suggestions as to where this, this submission could be improved. And, and that's really a, um, important um aspect of the jury's mission is to not simply send you a, a generic like yep sorry or you know not at this time um, there, there's actually quite a bit of information uh, in in the uh, in the feedback that you get as a submitter and so if you're unsure honestly one of the best things you can do is to submit because then you'll get feedback and and be able to hone your uh, submissions for future conferences so I think that's great I can share a little behind the scenes as a, a PhD dropout that oftentimes labs will kind of predict like they don't expect to get in, but they predict um, that they will get feedback and kind of incorporate that on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, that's awesome. Have you guys talked about the the faculty submitted student work category? That's something that we've been submitting to for. A oh, absolutely. That I didn't get to talk about that. So why don't you share about that? Because oh, sure. Well, I can. I can from not being on the committee, but for someone who submitted for the past couple of years, I think it's such a an, an awesome category to exist. Um, so I'm, I'm. I was really excited when I first found it. Um, but it is called the Faculty Submitted Student Work Category, the FSSW. Um, it happens every year at SIGGRAPH. The deadline is in June, which we really appreciate that it uh, fits into the academic cycle very nicely. So at the end of the year, when all your grades are submitted and assessments are collected, if you have a couple of standout works um, from a particular assignment, you can submit it as an FSSW category. Um, so the past couple of years, I've been submitting my um, senior studio class, which is a capstone senior film project class. So my uh, senior films that come out every year, I try and get a couple in. Um, I've had a, a different faculty submit from our department. Um, that was also shout out to the education committee. Thank you for changing that requirement. So it's per instructor instead of per institution. So um, encourage your colleagues to submit as well. Um, and then my understanding is a reel is cut together of all the video content and um, a gallery is assembled online for all the image content. Um, and then both the instructor and the student can use it as a resume line, which is really nice. You get a nice little SIGGRAPH resume um, uh, line for your CV or resume. I said that twice now. It's the end of day on Friday and I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Um, but I, I think that summarizes it okay. Um, and yeah, no, I think that it's it's really great to uh, to bring that up because um, it give, it gives the chance for the students to to have you know they, they might you know especially undergraduate students yeah. to to have a presence in, in at the conference. It's you know um, I, I've seen students often go to where that's playing and it's usually yeah. being displayed in the SIGGRAPH village and, and they're there with their phones ready to show, look, there's my thing, it's at SIGGRAPH. Um, I'm gonna copy paste. Frank, by the way, at the moment, um, student categories and film festivals are often, um, especially thinking about like the electronic theater student category, it's very difficult for undergraduate students who just learned what Maya was two or three years ago to compete in those levels where it's kind of saturated with a lot of grad students or professionals who go back to school or certificate programs. Um, those are filmmakers that have experience under their belts and it's awesome and there's a place for that. But the faculty submitted student work category is kind of nice, again, for the kind of more realistic uh, students who just learned what Maya was. Um, not to discourage them from submitting to both, of course, but um, I, I have that conversation with my students when they're looking at those student film categories in major film festivals, the big ones, um, and they're kind of confused about the quality of work there. 
Um, same, same idea as kind of like concept art versus promotional art. Like it's a little bit different. It's a little bit higher caliber. Um, so uh, searching for student film categories that are appropriate to their skill level and experience level and years in the industry, um, I think is, is an especially special category and important that we have that represented somewhere at SIGGRAPH. Um, so if they're disappointed, they don't get into the electronic theater just yet. Um, we have something like that that exists for them. Absolutely. And I think that, um, so I, I posted links to last year's call because this year's call for the faculty student submitted work is not uh, out yet. And, and that again, ties into, it's actually one of the, the last deadlines for the August conference that, that you have until June to make those submissions Very to tie in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so that submission doesn't open it quite yet, but it, um, one thing to note for all educators, particularly, well, sp specifically in the United States, that it is important to make sure that you get appropriate FERPA releases from your students. That is a component of the submission process. I think, you know, right now, if you're faculty and you're running your class and uh, you're, you're thinking you're going to have some material coming out of your current class that, that would be of use to that, make sure you get the, you know, look up what the FERPA releases are and, and have those because you'll need to attest that, that you've collected that in order to submit so that uh, your work, that, that your students' work can be shown. But again, I I think it's uh, really cool, and, and that, like it's also a way for students who maybe don't have the opportunity to travel to the conference and actually be there in person yeah. to feel that they do have a presence. Because you know, it, it, sometimes those students that are there taking the pictures or, or filming the video of, of work, you know, it's their work. But I've also seen students be there and like my friend's work. It just was up there, and they they filmed it. Like they they were there, they filmed it, and they sent it to the friend. Like your work was there, and so. Again, uh, not everyone can make it to the conference in person, and so it's a way to um, to get connected. So I think this that's that's actually what a great way to wrap up this soiree, Natasha. Thank you so much for for bringing that up. And with that, I am going to call that a day. We're going to wrap up our recording. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being a part of this. And if you just watched this as a recording, thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for the next soiree.